This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University. Today I want to talk about Bitcoin nodes, censorship, and big blockheads, basically highlighting a few of my responses to some of your questions. Gabriel Sanchez, Y5G, wrote in, someone please educate me so running your own node allows you to send and receive transactions, or it's basically a platform for you to watch your transactions along with everyone else using BTC. Definitely will follow these directions. I might just be ignorant to the true or deeper purpose. I'm only five months into the B the Bitcoin journey. So congratulations to uh, you, Gabriel, for being interested in, in running a Bitcoin node so early in your journey. My response, running your own Bitcoin node means that you're self-sovereign and don't have to ask someone else's node like Trezor's or Coinbase or any other company. You don't have to ask anyone else's node to broadcast a Bitcoin transaction to the Bitcoin network when you're sending money. Having your own node also allows you to verify that the BTC that you're holding is actual real BTC that can still be spent. Running your own node also means that you won't be leaking privacy to Trezor or Coinbase if you use them for, to uh, broadcast your transactions. Also, running your own node allows you to verify for yourself without having to trust someone else that every single Bitcoin transaction since 2009 is a valid transaction and not someone spending the same money twice or violating any of the other consensus rules. The list goes on and on. And then I edited the comment to say, just realized I forgot to include something else, which is very important. Running a node allows you to control whether or not you want to accept and relay spam transactions to other nodes. Not sure how I could have forgotten that given the current events happening right now in Bitcoin. And I'll put a link once more to these resources and videos that will teach you how to install Bitcoin Knots. Another question, what options are there of both Bitcoin Knots and Bitcoin Core were somehow corrupted and how might that affect Bitcoin? These are both different ways of running the Bitcoin software if you want to run a Bitcoin node, both Bitcoin Knots and Bitcoin Core. My response, both are just software so they can be copy pasted and modified as needed. If there's a malicious update to either of them, someone can go in there, take out that little piece of code or you can just choose not to upgrade to the new version. Thomas W4298 writes in, it's not true to say it's maintained by one guy. So this is in response to this critique that Bitcoin Core is maintained by a bunch of people, but Bitcoin Core, I'm sorry, Bitcoin Knots is just maintained by one person, namely Luke Dasher. And I think Thomas here has a good summary of the response to that. It's not true to say that's maintained by one guy. He merges 99.99% of core of the same code, has all the same code, review tests, etc. Only that the extra 0.001% is maintained by one guy. And I said exactly, you said it much better than I did. Another question, will Bitcoin knots block Bitcoin blocks that have large op return transactions in them? That would be the ultimate pressure tactic and lead to a hard fork. My response, no, once transactions are in a block, Bitcoin knots will validate and add to the blockchain. Rejecting a block like this would lead to a network fork, as you say, which we definitely do not want. We do not want a fork where we end up with a different token and a different network. Magic Internet Money 8715 asks, he says, I agree with this video's premise, but I do want to call out something you've said repeatedly in the past that Bitcoin is for you and Bitcoin is for your enemies. What if your enemies happen to be spammers? I think this is a good question. My response, no, that phrase has a completely different meaning. What it means, Bitcoin is for enemies, Bitcoin's for enemies. It means that I'm fine with North Korea or Russia or drug dealers or even sex traffickers using Bitcoin as money, even though I don't like those people. And some of those people I obviously despise like sex traffickers. Bitcoin is money for enemies. That's the emphasis. Bitcoin is money for enemies. It's not a data platform for enemies. Bitcoin is a monetary network and we need it as an alternative to Swift or Fedwire and OFAC, which can and do censor monetary transaction. So the issue of spam and filtering out spam is not censorship. Censorship is when the U.S. government tells a Bitcoin mining company that they cannot include a certain transaction in a block. Filtering is when you filter out spam. And when you filter out spam, you are not censoring the money of your enemy. So it's quite different. This uh, response, this question from Adias13, BSV looking real good lately, Segwit Segwit Greg Coin, I assume he's referring to Greg Maxwell, one of the Bitcoin Core developers. Segwit Greg Coin BTC is basically central banking legacy 
revamped. This is another one of those crazy big blockers or BSV guy. My response, BSV is a failed fork of Bitcoin that is so weak that a single medium-sized BTC mining pool could 51% attack it. He's of course referring to Bitcoin Satoshi's vision, which has nothing to do with Bitcoin or Satoshi's vision. It's a fork of Bcash, which itself is a fork of BTC, but this is a chart of BSV against Bitcoin. You can see how it's virtually gone to zero against BTC and continues to go to zero against BTC. Same with Bcash, BCH going to zero against BTC. And in terms of a 51% attack on BSV, I thought this this uh, post from Bob Burnett was quite interesting. I just realized that Barefoot, this is his mining company, Barefoot Mining, has enough hash power to overpower the BSV network many, many times over. According to miningpoolstats.com, it takes only about 26 PETA hashes, I believe that is, to get to 51% on BSV. Because it's morally wrong, I'll never do it. But if anyone needed any additional evidence that BSV is dead, this is it. Note, I don't think anyone would consider Barefoot to be a large miner. At best, we are mid-sized in the Bitcoin world. And even Bcash, BCH is very precarious. Barefoot doesn't control enough hash rate to attack that network alone, but us plus a couple of buddies could do it. To be clear, I wouldn't ever do it and would be opposed to anyone else doing it, but clearly Bcash, BCH is not secure. Why Bcash would have a market cap of $9 billion is beyond my comprehension. I think that's a great comment and a great reminder that these forks of Bitcoin just don't have the same security. And so you should be very careful and should not hold them. If you're enjoying this video so far, I just ask you to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and leave a comment or question. Share this video with a friend or family member as well. And you should also know on X, I don't know if this keeps happening this morning, I pull up someone that I follow and it says that I no longer follow them. So be careful on X. It seems to be unsubscribing people without your permission. HTNSAO writes in, what happens when halvings reduce block rewards and low transaction per second can't compensate? What do the miners start mining instead? As it will turn out, this is a leading question that he means to lead somewhere. But my response, block subsidy has gone down from 50 Bitcoin to 3.125 Bitcoin. This is how much a miner or mining pool makes when they win a block or find a block. And somehow miners, so it's basically collapsed. What is that? 94% or something uh, from 50 Bitcoin to 3.125 Bitcoin and somehow miners have survived, but you're right that they're increasingly going to be needing those transaction fees to survive. So when you mine a block or your mining pool, you basically, you get the block subsidy, which is currently 3.125 Bitcoin. And you, you also get all the transaction fees for Bitcoin transactions that you include in that block. And so the way the network is trending, it's becoming increasingly reliant on transaction fees and less reliant on the block subsidy. And this is how Satoshi bootstrapped the network. And this was his decision to really front load the issuance of new coins. But basically, block subsidy has fallen. You're right that they're increasingly going to be needing those transaction fees to survive. That is miners. Well, block space is for monetary transactions. If there's not enough demand for monetary transactions on chain, then Bitcoin is dead. Satoshi said as much. If Bitcoin survives as a spam blockchain controlled by just a few mining pools, then it's probably not going to be worth very much either. So then he responds, he or she responds, yes, so perhaps it's inevitable that all the mining hash will move over to BSV to be used in LOT microtransactions. I'm not sure what that is. That's never going to happen. BSV is a dead fork. That's never coming back to life. I should have known that you have an axe. You had an axe to grind. And he responds, it's weird how people keep saying BSV is dead. Transaction fees of just one Satoshi. Well, the reason it has such low transaction fees, that's not necessarily a good sign. Though, of course, Bitcoin itself has very low transaction fees right now. Low transaction fees are a sign of very low demand for something. And again, I refer, I refer him to the chart of BSV versus Bitcoin. And then consider how easy it is to 51% attack BSV right now. Also, Craig Wright is not Satoshi. That's the other problem with BSV. It's intimately involved with all these scammy characters like Craig Wright. And this is what we're seeing. I'm seeing this definitely in my comment section and on X as well. A lot of people, the so-called big blockers who are on the losing side of the block size wars from 2015 to 2017, have been coming out of the woodwork trying to spin recent events in terms of Bitcoin Core and our fight against Bitcoin Core and spam, trying to spin these recent events and saying, you see, we were right, Bitcoin Core is corrupt. But I just want to put, go on the record here to say that this is complete nonsense. 
Bitcoin Core in 2017 is not Bitcoin Core in 2025. It's quite obvious. And then this narrative that Bitcoin Core and Blockstream quote unquote hijacked Bitcoin in 2017, you may have heard Roger Ver and Tucker Carlson or read his, his book. This idea that those entities hijacked Bitcoin and censored poor Roger Ver is a totally absurd narrative. What, ha what actually happened is Roger Ver fell out of consensus and he, after forking the network and Bcash basically went to zero against Bitcoin, but there was no hijacking involved. And when Roger Ver tries to tries to paint himself as being this victim, it's important to remember that Roger Ver owned hundreds of thousands of Bitcoin. He also owned the do domain Bitcoin.com. He could use all of these things for his propaganda. And he also owned and controlled the main Bitcoin Reddit group. And he was friends with all the biggest Bitcoin corporations in the world, in including Bitmain, the largest Bitcoin uh, ASIC producer, manufacturer, and then all the big Bitcoin companies at the time. So Roger Ver was not a victim of anyone. He was actually on the side with the most apparent power, and yet he still lost. This is really interesting. He lost because Bitcoin plebs ran nodes and had the courage to dump Bcash after the fork and hold BTC when Roger Ver forked the network. Roger Ver made the biggest power moves you could imagine, and he still lost. And the problem is now he has this nerve, he has the nerve to peddle narratives about how he was a poor little victim. Well, someone who controls all those media outlets, is friends with all the big corporations, and owns hundreds of thousands of Bitcoin is not exactly a victim. So I still consider him to be a very bad actor. And I think he's got a little problem with narcissism. That's just my opinion. That being said, though, I will go on the record. I will not gloat that he's in jail right now for alleged tax evasion. I think the U.S. exit tax, which he's being accused of not paying in full, is an abomination and should be abolished. U.S. exit tax actually ultimately hurts the U.S. since it discourages smart and wealthy immigrants from moving to the U.S. because they might get caught in the exit tax net if they ever decide to leave again. So it's not even good for the U.S. It's immoral. It's unethical to try to trap people in a country. If you want to revisit the time that I called Roger a big blockhead, in allusion to this idea of big blockers, and he got mad. I'll put a link in the description notes to his response video. I made a video in which I called him a big blockhead, uh, Bitcoin and the big blockheads, and then he made a response video. And he made this response video actually just a week or two before he was arrested, so that was really weird. But he called it Bitcoin University Needs a History Lesson on Bitcoin. So you can revisit that if you want to have some fun. But anyway, I wish Roger Ver the, vet the best, and I hope he's able uh, to get out of his current uh, current situation. If you enjoy this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.